Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I have a wonderfully special guest. I have somebody who has risen to internet and sex work fame in a very short amount of time. She's going to tell us what all the rest of us have been doing wrong. Um, I bring to you the OnlyFans and Twitter star of 2020, Savannah Solo. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Oh my gosh, hello. What an introduction. Oh my God. <laughs> How are you? I'm so wonderful. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm excited to like virtually meet you. Yes. Um, you're somebody that has come up, you've come up a couple of times in my past episodes and actually it was my production manager, Eva, who turned me on to you. She loves you. And, oh. um, and she's like, you got to follow this girl <laughs> on Twitter. She's so funny. And I was like, okay. And I watched your videos and you are very funny. And oh. for somebody <laughs> Who has not been in sex work for terribly long? You know exactly how to um, make fun of it because <laughs> it is a truly ridiculous job most of the time, and a lot of things that you say very much hit home for us. Um, so let me also, I'll just say, like the first video I think I saw was you um, explaining to somebody. I don't know. Is this your alter ego, Jim Jim? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jim About- Jim is the, uh, he's, he's like the, um, he's like the mascot for my subscribers, but like mm. the ones that are, they mean well, but like they do dumb things or they say yeah. stupid things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, the, that's Jim Jim. <laughs> so is that, that, so it was like a back and forth between you trying to explain to someone <laughs> what you do on your OnlyFans because, you know, of course, people don't want to fork out money and find out. Mm-hmm. They want to ask you a million fucking stupid questions on right. social media. And I think you ended up saying something like you you masturbate on a unicycle with your foot up your butt. Yeah. Or something like that. <laughs> yes. Yes. That one was about um, people. I, I feel like I get this message in my DMs all day long and, and people are like, Tell me about your OnlyFans. I'm like, what What do you fucking want me to say? I, there's like a whole list whenever, right before you hit the subscribe button, there's a whole list on top of the subscribe button of the, all the things that you can and cannot expect from me. I'm like, do you read? You obviously do because you wrote me this message. What, are you, what do you want from me? Well, guess who, who didn't read that and who's going to ask you <laughs> what... Is on your OnlyFans. That would be the person who's interviewing you right now. <laughs> done okay. like almost no research. You weren't trying to subscribe to it, so it's different. It's different. Well, I probably, I mean, a responsible interviewer would have actually done that, but I'm not that kind of person. Responsible interviewers aren't fun, so we're just gonna <laughs> on, yes. my, on my OnlyFans. It's I. My name is Savannah Solo because I was feeling pretty emo about Star Wars whenever I was making my account, but also because I only have solo videos on there. So it's mm-hmm. just me, myself, and I. Um, it's I, I've referred to it before as just my naked YouTube channel. It's really, I do all sorts of stuff. Sometimes I'll sit there in my pajamas and do a face mask. Sometimes I'll bake cookies naked. Sometimes I like, well, uh, quite often I like to get drunk in the bath and just talk shit. (laughs) Those are pretty popular. (laughs) That was my favorite pastime (laughs) once upon a time. Now I just sit in the bath and and eat too much food. But getting drunk in the bath was like my favorite thing. I think the first... The first episode of that started because I was I had gotten um, I had ordered Mexican food from like a local favorite Mexican restaurant and they're only doing like curbside and to go orders and so I ordered Mexican and I was like are you guys doing margaritas to go they're like yeah we do margaritas to go I was like all right yeah give me a margarita to go and they I thought they were gonna like mix up a, they were like we only do it by the gallon I was like that's cool I thought they were gonna like give me a gallon of margarita but they gave me a gallon of mix and like a whole bottle of tequila and I was like 
going back to my my room and I was like, you know what? It's time to have a party by myself. <laughs> and so I got really drunk and I sat in the bath and I drank margaritas and I just talked shit, shaved my legs and it was um, a hit. I, I was going to do something spicy and like masturbate but then i ended up falling asleep and that and then i just called it the girlfriend experience and so like was this a live shower or was this like an actual video no no i was like recording a video and i was going to like i because i edit all of my stuff in iMovie before i post it on my page and so i was gonna like I had like a whimsical, like fun, stupid music in the background and I had all sorts of fun things going on. And then I just like, I, I got up to the end and I was like, I'm just tired. I'm just ready to go. I was too drunk. I was like, fuck it. I shaved my legs. I feel like a dolphin. I'm just ready to get in bed. Like <laughs> That's all I want. And that's what I did. And then I just posted that and everybody loved it. <laughs> but yeah, oh yeah. All of, all of my content is just... It's just me existing naked most of the time. <laughs> so how much of it is, because one of the, I, I know that people expect a lot of humor from you, right? Because you post these mm -hmm. very funny videos. To, to, do they expect like everything to be comedy when they come on your OnlyFans? And then are they surprised that you are like actually masturbating and do, <laughs> doing sexual things and like being, set? for some reason, like, because I've only seen that side of you, I... I, I don't know. I don't imagine you like actually being like, do you like it when I touch my tits? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. That's exactly what it is. So like I, and it's such a weird balance. I've actually made like complaining, like joke, funny videos on Twitter about people who will subscribe. And it's either there. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are a whole ton of people who are in the middle who are like, I like that I can log on and I'm laughing while I'm jerking off. I, that's a combination I wasn't expecting, but I enjoy it. It makes me happy. So like, that's always really nice. But usually I get, I get these messages and it's either one or the other where someone is like, I didn't realize that you were just going to be like, having fun and like doing funny things while you were naked and like doing spicy things. I thought it was just going to all be like TikToks. And then there's this guy who's like, I, I'm pretty upset that your pussy was out. I really like, I, I, I was expecting, or, or maybe I've already messed up this analogy. There's one guy who always who's obsessed with like, why aren't there videos of you getting gang banged on your OnlyFans whenever you didn't advertise that at all? And why are you like, why is it like, not why are you even naked? Yeah. Like it's, yeah, there's always the back and forth. I'm like, I, you paid $6 to be here. Uh, that's, that's how I feel. Oh my God. Because I also have an OnlyFans and, you know, there's a lot of things that I don't do. Like I don't do, I only do softcore nude. I don't do masturbation. I don't do open, like mm -hmm. I don't do any of that stuff. And it's, I'm very fucking clear about that. You know, you come in, there's an intro <laughs> message. I'm very clear. And like almost every time is like, so do you have any close up shots of you spreading your vagina? I'm like, no, no, I sure don't. And well, well, what about your asshole? <laughs> no, no, I don't have that either. Isn't that strange? <laughs> oh and they're just like, well, 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 then like, why am I here? I'm like, I don't know. You tell me <laughs> you paid $6. Okay. I just spent $6 on a Frappuccino at Starbucks and I got to drink that. And I drank that in like two minutes and you just paid for 30 days for $6. So go fuck yourself. Yes. Like I went to Burger King the other day to get an impossible Whopper. And I was like, God damn it, this impossible Whopper. It wasn't even a fucking meal, but this motherfucker cost more than my OnlyFans and people still get upset at me in my <laughs> DMs on OnlyFans because I wasn't getting dicked down all day on live stream on OnlyFans. <laughs> Dude. I know. And it's <laughs> funny because it's like, it's also too, like they act like you're holding, like I'm not denying you food <laughs> and shelter. Okay. You don't need <laughs> this in your life to get by. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so true. That is so fucking true. And like, 
the thing is there are so many people who are like, you know what? I paid $6 to be here. Whatever I get is going to just be a fun time for me. And then if it's not worth renewing for another 30 days of daily content, whether that be a picture or a 45 minute video of me doing whatever the hell I'm doing, but right. like, <laughs> there are always those people who are just like, I, I got a message like two days ago. It was like, like you never get fucked. I'm 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 pissed off and I've never like resubscribing ever again. And I was like, I just messaged him back. I was like, did it make you feel like really good to send me that message? Yeah. Like, did it just make your dick so hard to send me that message and tell me that you could not wait to not be subscribed to me anymore because I don't <laughs> I'm not taking dick on my own <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, for that six dollars that you're about to lose, you better you better hurry up and do that. Right. Like if you're that hard pressed for your six dollars, please don't spend that money on my OnlyFans. Yeah. <laughs> spend it on an impossible spend it on an impossible burger. That's fucking right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> It's it's interesting the and you know obviously you're getting kind of uh, well people are generally entitled anyways but it's the entitlement that some fans feel over sex workers is really quite remarkable and I've noticed too that the people who pay the least amount of money are the ones who complain the most and then the people who spend the most amount of money are the ones that are the most grateful because I'm sure on the opposite end of the spectrum you have you know like a small few core group of super dedicated fans that like just love and respect you no matter what you do. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And those people are amazing. They really are. I mean, like yeah. I have people who will message me like if they're just like, I mean, we're in the middle of a, a global pandemic. I mean, we're in a crisis and they're like, like, Oh my God, they're messaging me on my only fans. And they're like, Oh my God. Like I, I have to cut out everything this month that I normally would just like all entertainment, everything that's like superfluous. I have to just cut out this month and like, I I'm not going to be subscribed next month. And I just wanted to message you and let you know that like, I'm going to come back whenever I can, but things are just tough right now. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, like you, you didn't even have to message me and tell me that, but like, Oh, that's so yeah. like, so, like, please, like, please save your money. Put, but buy your groceries. Like my my butthole will be here forever, and your <laughs> feeding yourself is so much more important than my butthole. <laughs> so like, Please go ahead and feed your family. My butthole will be waiting for you whenever you're ready. <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> but I'm just like, but they didn't. I mean, like people who are like, I just wanted to let you know that I'm leaving for a little bit, but I'm going to come back. And I'm like, oh, like you didn't even have to say anything. Like that's, even that's nice. Like it's not, don't get me wrong. I totally appreciate the people who send me tips all the time and are like buying things for me. I mean, that is the shit. But I mean, even the right. people who were just chilling in the middle, they're like, I really appreciate you. I mean, they spend money each month to stay subscribed to me. And that's, I mean, that's worth its weight in gold to me too. But like, there are so many people like doing so much and just being such good fans and such good like patrons. It's, it's pretty awesome. I'm constantly like surprised and so happy to see that I've like, for the most part, I feel like, out of all my subscribers, I can only think of just a handful of people who I genuinely did not enjoy them being around. And that includes a group of like a, a handful of people who have like leaked my content even. But even those people, like I had a really bad content leak a couple months ago. And I tracked it down to a Discord server where these guys were leaking OnlyFans and I just straight up messaged the two dudes who were posting my stuff in there. And I was like, hey, um, this is not very punk rock of you. Could you like delete all of this stuff and stop leaking my nudes? And they were like, oh, shit. Hey, yeah, sure. We're really sorry. We're we're fans. We'll delete it all. And and then they did. And I was like, well, what do you know? Even my really, really shitty subscribers aren't that bad. 
<laughs> well, it's because they got caught. That's right. It was, but they could have been total dicks. I didn't have to issue them like a DMCA or anything. They just right. They just did everything I asked. So yeah. But I was. I've just been time and time again. I've been surprised by people being surprisingly decent, even even when they're not being decent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of really wonderful people out there and there's also, you know, a few shitty people and that's just, I mean, that's the world in general, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So tell us about how you got into the OnlyFans phenomenon because from what I understand, you only started in January, which is yes. remarkable because you're already, what, in like the point two percentage, point oh two percentage? This past week, I jumped in the into the point to the 0.1%, which is zero. Like, so, so yeah. Okay. So yeah, point, yeah, yeah point that, one. which yeah. is, which is amazing. I think the Crazy. best that I've ever done is like 0. 0.7. Yeah. That's amazing um, too. Which is good, which is good. Yeah. I was always like really surprised by that. So, um, and I know that once you start to get to those like fractional decimal points that like that indicates a significant shift of money, yeah. like which it's like, it's like how, earthquakes like every point of an earthquake is like a hundred times something like yeah that but anyways it's i'm not good crazy. at math but it's a, it's it's a lot so clearly you're very successful at it and to become that successful in such a short amount of time is incredibly unique and i think it's something that a lot of girls unfortunately expect without mm -hmm. having put a lot of effort into they're only fans because, you know, only fans has suddenly become like this big, like phenomena that like everybody knows about. I mean, I remember when only fans came out a few years ago and I was like, wow, that's a shitty content platform. I signed up for it anyways. Cause I was like, well, you know, like I just, oh yeah. I mean, um, but it's done incredibly well. Yeah. They, they could do with a serious interface like overhaul and they fucking know it and everybody knows it, but whatever they're making a ton of money. So, yeah, and we are making really good money with it. Yeah. So we're grateful for that, but fuck's sakes, dude, there's so many changes you guys could make to make it better. But anyways, we won't go into that. So, um, so, and, 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 you know, with the pandemic and people like losing their jobs and uh, being unable to work and being unable to pay their rent and, you know, all this financial fear, I know a lot of people, who, you know, swore that they would never do anything even remotely sex work related. And of course, OnlyFans advertises themselves as being like not sex work related. They're like for comedians and musicians. It's like, bitch, <laughs> there's only titties on your platform. Like, come on, let's let's mm -hmm. be fucking real here. I've never watched someone subscribe to a, uh, a fitness trainer's OnlyFans. Never in my no. life have I no. seen the fitness no. trainer whose OnlyFans is always promoted. Like it's no. I'm pretty sure it's just a fake. It's just it's all fake. It's a facade. Yeah. Like a I mean, honestly, the platform for creators that is non sexual would be like Patreon. Like that's yes. that's the one. Yeah. For a hundred percent. Absolutely. But you're like I have a Patreon for my podcast. I don't have an OnlyFans for my podcast. So, anyways, uh, my point is is that a lot of people, a lot of girls specifically, were coming on and they're like, okay, I'm going to show my tits on OnlyFans. I'm going to make all this money, and they don't. You know, because some people make a lot of money, but not everybody can make a ton of money. And I think that they, and then they, and then they feel, you know, upset. Like, why aren't I not making all this money immediately right away without having a name or putting any like time or marketing into this? So how did you get to where you are right now in such a short period of time? And, and what even brought you into this market? So, uh, in, I, I want to say it was like the no, November, December, somewhere around that mark. That was the time, like the time period where the fires in Australia were getting really bad and everyone was like paying attention to the, uh, the naked philanthropist because she was selling her nudes and like promoting her OnlyFans and then like donating all of that money to the fires in Australia. And so like that put, I feel like that put OnlyFans on a lot of like normal average people's map because that mm. was like something crazy up until that point the idea of like selling your nudes was is you know to me was just like 
like, oh, that's what I'll do whenever I get real desperate. I'll sell my feet pics and I'll sell my nudes and then I'll be okay. <laughs> and like, that was never something that I had actually considered. And then my boyfriend at the time, we had been together for about three and a half years. And he, he was like, well, why don't you just make an OnlyFans? I was financially really, really struggling. I had graduated from college uh, with a business degree that couldn't get me a job anywhere. <laughs> and um, and so I was like really frustrated and kind of at my wits end. And I had been applying to jobs for a long time. And um, I decided that I would give it a go. And like I flip flop back and forth. And I was like, I don't really know if that's what I need to do. Like, I don't know. Um, if that would be right for me and my relationship, I don't know, like all of these variables. I mean, and, and on top of that, this guy was a guy who I, he was the only guy I've ever seriously dated. Um, he was my only like actual long-term relationship or really any relationship longer than three months. So, and there had only been one of those. So like, um, but it was, it was like a big deal. And I come from uh, an extremely like, Christian and like conservative background and like family. And so the idea of jumping into sex work seemed, it was one of those things where it's like, fuck, like if, if for some reason, like I actually did become successful on this, like, is that going to tear my family apart? Oh, well, like we might as well just jump it. Like, let's just go for it. Like they're going to have to find out I'm bisexual at some point too. And they'll just, we're just going to rip all the band-aids off at one time. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I ended up, I, I started in January and I thought that I was going to like be a Twitch streamer and then like sell like sexy cosplay pictures or something on the side. And then I realized instantly that like I was terrible at being a Twitch streamer and that um, posting hot pictures of yourself online isn't exactly the money maker. It's not, it's not instant money. Like you assume it's going to be, I was just talking yesterday on a, a different podcast about how like people, people think like they take a picture of their butt and they're like, you know what? God damn it. I've got a great ass. I've got a great ass and there's no reason why everyone shouldn't love to buy a picture of my ass. And so I'm going to sell it. And then they try to sell it on the internet and everyone's like, you have a butt. <laughs> everyone has a butt. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. There are plenty of butts and I can subscribe to this OnlyFans account with a thousand pictures of this girl's butt. And you've only got one picture of your butt on your account. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and the other big problem there is people, first starting out me as well included i'm i'm pricing like oh well i like i feel like i'm worth more than pricing my pictures at like five dollars or three dollars i feel like i'm it's worth more i'm worth more and then you have to come to a realization where it's like it's not about what you're worth it's about how much content do you have what type of content do you have and in comparison to other people, like where do you stand on like the scale in the market? Right. So like, right. it's not about pricing yourself for like what you deserve or what you're worth. It's what it's people about, will pay. That's right. And yeah. like even my my first month is like six dollars, and then all of the months afterward are seven fifty. Pricing seven fifty out of the gate, I found I could barely get any subscribers and I couldn't figure out what was wrong. I And I dropped it back down to six just to try it. And it was like the floodgates opened again. I hadn't done anything different. It was just like, I discovered that the $6 price point is just the perfect spot for me. When you say like $6, do you mean like $5.99 or do you mean literally $6? Literally $6. Just $6. I'm, I yeah. find that so many people, I myself have the 99. Yeah. I don't know. I always thought that was supposed to be a good marketing tech. It makes <laughs> people feel like it's just that much less money. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cause then they're looking at the five and they're not looking at the 99. That's, right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yes. Oh yeah. We love the psychological warfare. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, so I was, in January, I think I made eighty dollars 
uh, mm-hmm. maybe just a couple over. <laughs> and it was like, it, it was the point where I was, I was at a point where I was like, okay, do I toss in the towel? Because I'm not really selling anything. Like I, me, like everyone else on the face of the planet, I thought that just posting some pictures was going to be enough to market and people would just come in from, I don't know, I guess the, I just out of the fucking ether to subscribe to my OnlyFans. And that wasn't working out. And then um, my boyfriend had really encouraged me to keep going. He was like, no, you got this, like, just like stay on trend, like do only do what you're comfortable with. It was super, super supportive. And um, he pushed me to keep going. And at some point in, I want to say toward the end of March, I, because I mean, I, I had seen, I had seen an increase definitely between January and February I want to say I, I made around $500 in February, which was really good. I was just promoting all the time, just working constantly, um, working like nine to five and doing that. And um, so I was just like, I was getting burnt out, but I was seeing results of just working all the time and trying to market myself as like, I, I realized that just like saying like, like, oh, come see you and see my only fans. Like that's not, that's, that's not going to be enough about you to get someone to understand why they should subscribe to your only fans instead of this other list of gorgeous women and amazing content creators. Like what's going to set you apart. I started marketing with like really dumb sayings and like, just, just fucking stupid shit. Just really really stupid comments above my pictures to just catch someone and at the very least make someone go what the fuck (laughs) yeah what (laughs) and so that was working for me and uh it was uh, it was staying steady on that path until the end of march whenever i uh, decided to start making fun of sex work and my plights and daily things that I just went through um, and just making fun of all of the situations I kept finding myself in and the people I kept finding myself in contact with and just how absurd all of it is. And so I started making fun of that and it was, it ended up being like an instant hit. Like people started paying attention to my Twitter account. People started subscribing to my OnlyFans and I was making a lot of friends and really like starting to network and like discover people in the community who uh, who had similar content to mine and really just building friendships. And that was really cool. And then I did about a month of that. And then at the end of April, I made a video talking about I was just like in the shower I looked like a toe I was like just just talking shit about why people who who feel like they're morally they have a moral high ground because they don't pay for their porn suck like and it wasn't even like a a condemning it was like dude like if you don't want to pay for porn that's none of my business like do your own thing. Log on to Pornhub and watch the porn you want to watch. Do whatever you want. But like, don't come on to Twitter and then get upset at the people who make it because you suddenly are up on a high horse about people paying for porn whenever you watch it for free all the time. Like someone got paid to make it. Somebody bought it or else it wouldn't be made. <laughs> like Right, right. Like, and yeah, we do need, we do need money to operate. Yeah. And so it's just, it, I had just made a video about the absurdity of it and how, you know, complaining that someone, how you're not morally better than the person who actually paid that model or actress for access to her photos. And I didn't say anything wrong. It was like a, why are you booing me? I'm right situation. But it went like... I think it got like a million views and it got posted to all sorts of different websites and stuff. And I didn't watermark it like a dipshit, but like that, that was when it like really exploded. I pissed off the internet and then 
Um, and then I had a whole bunch of people, like I was, it was like super exposure. And so I was getting posted to all of these different websites and I was shared all over Twitter and people were just absolutely blasting me, even though I was totally right. But it, I got shared to so, all corners of the Twitterverse. And so when you say, whole- when you say people were blasting you, do you mean like who, who was mad at you? Like not not sex workers like people no, just no. in general because i haven't seen this video so i think i need to see it to like understand i'll make sure i send it to you later okay but it was just like um i had a lot of it, it was really just like fuck boy twitter because I was mm, right okay. and I was calling them out. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. um and then because it was getting a lot of attention, I was getting a lot of people who were like like, oh, isn't it it's pathetic that you sell your nudes and it just it, just the stupid comments that I was getting yeah. just all yeah, the time. All yeah. But just like three thousand of them coming in all at once and I was just like, It is what it is. Like I'm I'm right and you all know it. You all watch mm-hmm. porn. Your mom read Fifty Shades of Grey. Like, you can get yeah. out of my ass. Like, it's okay. <laughs> you can pay six dollars to see it. <laughs> um, but so that got that got like a lot of attention from the sex work community. But then I got a lot of. Uh, I, I mean, no press is bad press, but I got a lot of negative attention um, from the internet, which you know, it is what it is. Um, my, I go, I still go into fight or flight mode whenever I think about that video, but it's, I don't know, it put me on the map, so we'll thank it. Yeah. Um, But so that, that really started getting me some attention. I got, I want to say I got like 2000 subscribers in a day whenever that happened. Yeah, it was crazy. I was going from having like a hundred people who like, I knew all of them on like a first name basis. And like, we would chit chat every day. And I would, you know, post my regular video every day or or a picture every day on my OnlyFans. And it was just very small. I was just taking pictures on my little like piece of shit, three year old iPhone. And we were just all in there having a good time. And then all of a sudden, like 2000 people showed up. I had a, uh, I had a custom list. I was like doing customs for people and I had my little price list up and it was priced at like, like $30 for 10 minutes. And so, oh girl. Yeah. But, oh, like, I, no. but I mean, like I was doing like one custom every couple of weeks just because there yeah. was no one on there. So I didn't yeah. know any better. And then like 2000 people showed up and they were like, Oh word. <laughs> This yeah. is great. <laughs> and so I got super overwhelmed. It was just like sensory overload. I had so much to like handle. Um, and so I really had to just like trial by fire, just push through it, figure it all out. And um, and then I just kept like cranking out really stupid, funny videos about what it's like to be a sex worker. And of course, most of them are exaggerated. So like you were talking about um, one of the videos I had made where I was explaining to that guy, like what is on my OnlyFans? And I'm like, uh, there's a video of like 75 aliens running a train on me on my OnlyFans. Like, it's, <laughs> it's all just like super exaggerated humor, but it it feels like everything feels like it's do or die whenever it comes to interacting with people in sex work because everything is always like it's it's so much it's so extra all the time yeah but um but yeah so I've just been like cranking out stupid videos I had a tiktok um that I made that went viral about a month ago and I got a a bunch of subscribers from that a bunch of followers from that but it's just been I've just been doing the same thing consistently for the past seven months and it's, it paid the fuck off. (laughs) But I mean, other than that, I just have been trying really hard to not, um, to, to not try to be an internet persona. I just am me. (laughs) Then I don't, feel like I have to keep it up at all and I've spoken before about how like it's a you can choose to have a persona and protect 
who you are and just like take that off at the end of the day. If people don't like that persona, then you don't have to internalize any of those comments. You don't have to internalize any of that shit because you're basically just acting and doing mm-hmm. it very well. And mm. you can take that off like a coat at the end of the mm-hmm. day. But whenever you are yourself, I feel like it opens more doors to have people like your content because it's you specifically, not just because you're providing a special niche thing that they like or you know something where they can move on to the next person who is providing just a service or a persona. Then there's only one you and they can only like one you and people can come and go as they please. But at the end of the day, it's, I mean, it's why we go, we keep going back to our favorite YouTuber or we, we have that one late night talk show host that we like so much. I mean, those are definitely all personas, but (laughs) you know, there's, there's always got to be something that sets you apart. And I feel like looks wise, I'm, I have, a pretty average look and I don't have like some crazy insane body or anything. I am extremely average. And so I feel like I have to be the, Oh, but she has a great personality girl. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have to, I have to just bring as much personality to the table as I possibly can all the time. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, I mean, so that's kind of like a twofold thing because first of all, you know, the authenticity obviously draws people to you. And I think we're really existing in a different era now where people want and crave authenticity. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in the industry an incredibly (laughs) way too long. And like before the internet came along, actually, no, right when the internet came along. So like 22 years. So, you know, before sex workers, models, porn stars, whatever, were all, were definitely a persona Mm -hmm. and there was no real connection that you could have with them as a fan. There was no real authenticity. They were always super made up. They were glamorized. They were on a box cover. They were on a feature dancing stage. They were in penthouse magazine. You know what I mean? Like there was no, Mm -hmm. like you never felt like they were somebody that you could know or date or be friends with. And I think the internet changed all of that, especially with these personal content platforms, like OnlyFans, like camming, all of that. And so it's introduced this, the girl next door in like a whole different light, not like the playboy girl next door, who's still like a girl next door. That's not really attainable, (laughs) but like a real, like attainable feeling girl next door who will speak to you directly, you know, in her DMS, um, via camming, via Snapchat, whatever. And that's really brought a connection to the sex work industry that didn't exist there before. So people like you who have that personality that makes people like feel like they just want to hang out with you and that you're fun and that you're funny and you're, you're different and you're not unattainable. Mm -hmm. I think that is its whole, it's a whole, um, enigma. Enigma is not the right word. Sorry. It's a whole like attractiveness in itself. You know what I mean? That's totally different from the unattainable, beautiful porn star who like you look at her, you're like, that girl would never talk to me. Right. You know? And I think that there's something really appealing about that. But I also wonder too, because you rely so heavily or, I mean, you know, it's all about your personality, like you just said. And is it exhausting sometimes, you know, do people expect you to always be funny? Do people always expect you to be bubbly and hilarious? Because I find that, you know, sometimes, you know, people, there's some people that DM me all the time and they really want to have a constant fucking conversation and I'm busy and I'm tired and I'm fucking pregnant. And like, I don't want (laughs) to like watch your YouTube videos that you send me or, um, talk about your day or look at the pictures of the park that you took photos of. I just, I really don't want to. Uh, And I'm not very good at like, (laughs) pretending like I do, Mm -hmm. which isn't great. So, so do you ever deal with that? I, on my page all the time, like if I'm just having a fucking bad day, if I just feel like shit, I'll just make a post where I'm like, here's a picture of my titties from like two months ago. I'm sorry. There's nothing new on here right now for, you know, for this afternoon. I feel like shit. I felt like shit for the past three days. I'm not answering my messages tonight. Love you guys. I, 
I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. I've had a nightmare day and I'm just fucking tired. Like it's it's nice to be able to just be candid on there. And mm. I thank God every single day that that's the type of OnlyFans audience I tried to – I set out to cultivate. People mm. where I can just be like, I'm fucking exhausted and I'm not horny. I'm just not horny today. I'm tired mm. and I want to go to bed and I'm sorry. But like I will look at your penises later. I promise I'm not ignoring your penises. I'm just too <laughs> exhausted to talk to you about your penis right now with any sort of vigor. So I – Instead of just trying to pretend like I'm excited about seeing the picture of someone, the park that someone took for me, um, I, I definitely try to, like, if I'm not in the mood to look at that, I don't go through my DMs because I don't, mm. I mean, could I just fake a message and feign excitement about something? Absolutely, I could. But at the end of the day, I feel like that would just cause a lot of resentment toward the whole situation. And that's really what I don't want to do. That's what's so nice about it being my business and me working from home. Like whenever, like, like I never have to feel like I resent the work because I do it whenever I want to. I, whenever I can push through and do it. So I have, um, I, I have bipolar. So I'm sometimes like for weeks at a time, I'm just like exhausted and like I just can't get out of bed. And then for weeks at a time, I am on another plane of existence and I'm like doing everything all the time so much and I'm going fucking crazy. And so I get so much stuff done and I, I know where I am. And so like I will, I will record or like batch shoot so that if I feel it coming on I'm like oh shit I gotta I gotta squeeze the last drops of mania out of myself and I just I can get it all done I can do everything in the world and then I crash really really hard and I sleep for like a week and and I just schedule posts and I just try to answer messages whenever I can but Mm. um but yeah I definitely because I do the thing is like I do genuinely like to hear about people's day and I do really like to I have this one guy he I don't know where he lives he lives somewhere in the the north in like the mountains or something but he he's like a really skilled photographer but he doesn't like do photography for work it's just a hobby but he takes the most beautiful pictures and every single day he sends me a picture he's like Here's a hummingbird I saw today. Here's a flower I saw today that made me think of you. And I'm just like, God damn it, that's so fucking sweet. Like these people can't send me flowers, but it feels like I'm getting flowers from them every day. And so I I definitely don't ever like want to go through my DMs or answer comments whenever I'm not in the mood to receive them. <laughs> So I I find another thing I can do work-wise or another way I can use my time to get things done, but not from a customer service standpoint whenever I just feel like shit. Right. Yeah, that's probably smart. (laughs) Okay, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Um, We're going to come back. We're going to talk about uh, has OnlyFans affected Savannah's personal life and also about uh, dick ratings, which (laughs) might be something that you guys – I've never heard of, but boy, am I going to tell you about them. (laughs) So hang on. We'll be right back. (laughs) If you're here, it's probably because you're a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered. Well, that's great because I'm a fan of my podcast too. Now, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a crowdfunding platform that allows people to make contributions on a monthly basis. Because this podcast costs money to make, maybe even more so than others. I'm obsessed with quality. So since the beginning, I have always recorded in a studio, had a professional sound engineer, and recorded professional video. All of these things cost money, as you can imagine. And I also made a pretty scary decision this year to cut down on my directing gigs so that I could focus more on this podcast, which is why I need your help now more than ever. But don't worry, I'm not asking you to give me something for nothing. In exchange for your contributions, I offer so many perks. For example, access to the live streams of all of my interviews, a bonus podcast that I do called My LA Porn Life, Q&As where the stars answer your specific questions, behind the scenes interviews, merchandise such as mugs, shirts, and stickers, 
access to my private Snapchat, and so much more. You can join for as little as $5 a month and help me change the way the world sees the adult industry and sex work. So take a look around and see everything that I have to offer. I really hope that you'll join and be a part of our little community. All right, guys, we are back. So Savannah, I wanted to ask you, because you mentioned um, earlier before we, we took a break, that uh, you know when you weren't feeling up to it, you weren't going to look at people's penises. But when you were feeling up to it, you would be happy to look at people's penises. So do you do the thing that is so popular on these platforms, which is called dick ratings? And for those of you who don't know, men will send you a picture of their penis and they will pay you to rate their penis on a scale of one to 10 and maybe give them a little bit of detailed information about what you think of their penis. And then usually, at least for me, after you do it, they follow up with, so do you think I can get into porn? Um, do you have a job for me? <laughs> do you, do you do dick ratings and, um, and, and how are they for you? Do you, do you enjoy them? And do you ever give anybody below a seven out of 10? So I do, I do dick ratings, but I do them a little bit differently. I call them dick blurbs because I don't rate on a scale of one to 10. I just give them like a few sentences about like what I liked about their individual penis and um like just like two or three just a little like oh i like this and i like this and i like this good job good penis good penis <laughs> you grew a good one <laughs> so so that's probably smart not to do the rating because we i do the rating and and uh i, I ain't gonna lie there's probably gonna be a couple people from my only fans on here uh, <laughs> i generally make eva do them <laughs> She enjoys it. Oh my god, that is so funny. I do enjoy doing it. Like I cuz it's like I feel like I've seen every every penis in the penis rainbow. Like I very oh, rarely do I <laughs> but and then whenever I get one that's like super weird, like a really weird dick, I'm like excited. I'm like I I don't have this one in my Pokemon card collection. Like, I've never <laughs> seen that one before. Like, what a weird penis. Wow. What a different penis. You've made my day because it's not just the same penis over and over again today. <laughs> so what, okay, could you give us some detail of what constitutes a different penis for you? And like, how do you say that? Because the thing is, I feel that men are so, you know, if there's one thing that women who in sex work know about men is that a lot of them have serious insecurities when it comes to their penis, which, I mean, to be fair, it's the subject of much speculation and criticism amongst women as well. You know, like what's his dick like, or like, right. oh, I had a small dick. So it's like, it's a, it's a very much a focus and a focus point of like masculinity. So yes, it's something that men are very concerned of about. And, you know, I feel like would feel terrible making somebody feel terrible about their penis because I know how much it means to them. I generally feel that people pay for dick ratings to feel good about their penis, right. not to feel bad about their penis, unless they're into small penis humiliation, which is a whole other thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but for the most part, they want to hear that they have a nice penis and you would love to suck it. So um, how do you handle the different penises and and how do you blurb about those and and what do you do if you get one and you just can't find anything good to say about it at all oh but that's the thing is like i i will dig up something nice to say about any penis oh wait no no no. there was one penis that I, yeah i'll have to get to him but i okay so like a different penis a different penis would constitute like a micro penis or a mm -hmm. penis that has like the the width of my finger but it's got a head that's like a mushroom like really big like it's really really skinny with like a really big head or like um i've seen some funky penises i saw a penis that dog legged like this the other day I saw a penis with like a really tiny head and like a super thick body i mean <laughs> 
you see all the different shapes and sizes of penis. And then you have your regular penis that looks like the textbook drawing of a penis. It's very average. Mm-hmm. It, there's nothing nothing super different about it. But even about that penis, you can find something that's different from the last penis that you just looked at. And you can differentiate the two. But there was this one dick. And it wasn't that he had a small dick. It wasn't that he had like a like any sort of funky shape to him. It was genuinely the biggest and longest penis I have ever beheld in my life. And it was so massive. It looked like it could be mistaken for my shin. And I was just like, I just messaged him back. He was like, he sent me the money over and he was like, I would like a rating. And then he sent me like 20 pictures of this fucking schlong. And I was like, did he need to take 20 pictures to get it all in? Like, did <laughs> like, could he not fit it in his frame? Did he have to use the panoramic? He was the like, panoramic option. he set his phone up on the other side of the room and stood all the way back so that I could see this penis. And I was like, it wasn't like the normal, like, like or like yeah. the undershot. I mean, there's a thousand different ways to take a picture of your penis. This man set his phone up and walked back. And then he had like all sorts of different like settings. Like he had done this in a million different rooms. And I was like, does, is this like his thing? Does he take a pic- a, like a picture of his dick in every room that he walks into? Like, what is his... I want to know what makes him tick, but I just messaged him back. I was like, what the fuck are you clubbing to death with that? Like, what, (laughs) what, where are you putting that? Do you wear shorts? Are you able to wear shorts? Is it always like that? Is it just that freakishly big whenever it's hard? Like, give me, give me the rundown on your dick. What's it like living with that thing? And he was like, oh, haha, so you like it? I was like, I'm perplexed. I'm just trying to understand how... You live day to day with that. Like, I, I I feel like I can't tell you if I like it or not because I just, I don't understand what's going on here. And I especially don't understand what, well, why God would give any one man that kind of power. <laughs> and then he was like, well, my, my girlfriend actually broke up with me because she said it was too big. And I was like, yeah, fucking good for your girlfriend. <laughs> You know, I, it's funny because every guy wants like a huge penis, but I feel like it's a, it's a real handicap yeah. to have something that big. I actually, I had Rob Piper on my uh, podcast and he is, he's a male performer. He has a very <laughs> large penis. And, and he admitted to me that it is difficult sometimes that sometimes when he was like casually dating, I think before he got into the porn industry, he pulled that thing out and girls would be like, no, mm like that's not going inside me. So, you know, I know that like every guy thinks that women like crave like this ginormous penis, but like we don't all enjoy being split in two <laughs> no. and having our service, our cervix, like, you know, yeah. punctured. Like it's actually not a wonderful thing to have an incredibly enormous no. penis. No, I've got a terribly shallow vagina. So the idea of <laughs> <laughs> anything that's just like massive like i look at some of these dildos some of these girls get and i'm like you voluntarily bought that for you oh my god like i i would be impaled on that there's just yeah i'm like five feet tall i i would just that would kill me that would kill me that would come yeah. out of my mouth <laughs> i don't want anything yeah. to do with that <laughs> yeah have you ever watched like anime porn and you can always tell when it like a guy made it and like you have these monsters having sex with this like Laura Croft or something and they have like these ginormous penises and like they'll show the penis like in her stomach like yeah. <laughs> bumping through her stomach like an alien yes. or I've seen one where it's coming out of her mouth and I'm what? like yeah, like he's having sex with her and it's so large that it goes through her entire body and the head like pops out of her mouth. <laughs> and I'm just like That's all we are. We're one long just like y- uterus. Yeah. And <laughs> our Yeah, and I'm like here. clear okay, and- clearly this person doesn't understand female biology number 1. Number 2, like <laughs> oh, who is into that? 
There's someone that's into everything. Like there, I swear to God, it's a, it's a man because I don't know any women who would like, I don't want to see a penis like coming, poking out through my mouth from the other end. Like, I don't know. No, that's not, that's not my jam personally for me. No. It's a no dog. No. <laughs> that's a, a, that's a big no. It's a no for me. But I mean, yes, I can. And I actually, that's, funny that 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 came up i had like i had just recently i had bought a um one of those like machine things it was like like 90 oh, the fucking machines yeah yeah it was like 90 dollars on amazon and i thought it would be- i love that they sell those on amazon by the right? way i and it came with like all these arms and like attachments and things i don't mean like an actual arm but i mean like with like all sorts of like things can that I- I can put on it can I ask you what they called it on Amazon? Did they call it a fucking machine? Because I feel like they yes. give it a different name. They so called they it can... a sex machine. And it's even got on the okay. side of it. It's got like a – it says sex machine. And then it has like a little like like quarter size sticker. And it's like – it's just like the torso of a really hunky man. <laughs> like something for you to look at. <laughs> I didn't know. Where, whatever. But – I mean, it came with like all sorts of different like things to put on it and like an extender. And I was just like, I just laughed because all of these different like attachments came from like different places. Like it was, it was weird. Like they all got tossed in this box with this thing. And I did like a long like unboxing and like, let's just try them all out video on my OnlyFans. And then I had later, I had made another video where like I was laying down and I was using it. And the way, the way just the fat on my stomach was jiggling, it looked like one of those videos. And I was like, this is not what this is. And I'm just like laughing, like just taking a video of it like this. And I'm just like, look at, look at it. I'm like a wave pool. Like, look at all of this. Some, one of you guys, one of you is into this. One of y'all is just going to mute this and just enjoy it like one of those, one of those like yeah. videos. I was like, look at this, look at my fat, look at it. <laughs> but yeah, I've always thought those are just hysterical. It's like, it's, yeah, the, it's There's the so many... rearranging my guts thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's it's just an interesting phenomenon, like penises and and how men feel about them and, and the fascination and the obsession with them. But anyways, um. <laughs> so you you mentioned earlier that you do custom videos. So do you have any? What are like the some of the what are the strangest videos you've been asked to do, and what is the most common kind that you're asked to do? So I stopped. I actually stopped doing the custom videos a couple months ago just because I got super overwhelmed, and I think I I I had like a backlog list of like over a hundred customs at one point. And because just because I had no idea how to price anything. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of girls charge anywhere between 50 to 150 a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And I hideously underpriced all of that. Yeah. And so, um, I, I get, I, well, I still get a lot of, a lot of people are like, Hey, can you make a video with someone else for me for X amount of dollars? I'm like, no, that's just not something that I personally offer. I'd be happy to send you over to this girl who does, or, you know, someone else who can offer mm-hmm. that for you. That's not something I'm not, I'm going to be able to make for you. Um, but most of them, most of them were like really tame and like, I had no problem doing it. It would just be normally it's someone who just has like a specific, request of like they they really want to see someone i don't know like eat a sandwich while they masturbate like it's just they nothing they could find from just searching on Pornhub. so they had Wait, to ask are, someone to make it are you supposed to eat a sandwich while you masturbate yeah, or you eat a sandwich while they masturbate to you eating a sandwich oh that would be fun because i don't do customs either That's but if someone wanted to pay me up. money to eat a sandwich and they wanted to masturbate while they watch yes. eat a sandwich. I, had a guy, I would do that. I had a guy who was like, I just want to see your ponytail. And I was like, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, but I mean, they're really, honestly, my customs, 
my custom requests have been like so tame. And so I was like always happy to oblige. And I didn't, I never marked up for doing like cosplay customs unless it was a cosplay that I didn't already own. And then I would be like, you can buy the costume for me and then right. I will just make stuff in it for you. And the costume could, you know, range from however much. But, um, but I had definitely a lot of requests for Ray from Star Wars. Uh, she's yeah. been extremely popular lately. And so I did uh, about a billion videos of Ray and lots of Princess Leia. Everyone loves Princess Leia. Um, I did like a whole like role play custom for someone where he was just like, a, I just wanted to be Princess Leia, but just act like her. Just surprise me. And so like it was like a bargaining with job of the hut video and like i got super in character and i wrote like a whole script for it and it was so much fun <laughs> but um but yeah so lots of star wars requests and then the only ones i've ever said no to are are things with pee and poop those are the only mm. ones where i was like this is just not my jam if that's your jam then that's your jam it is not my jam so i and plus you can seriously get like dinged and you can get your whole account taken down on only fans if you're trading any of that type of oh yeah that and anything with blood um so lactating like, also too what? Because, really yep mm -hmm. that's crazy like because i had a couple of people ask me not not that i would do it anyways but it's one of the things that is banned wow that's kind of crazy to me though because i just feel like I, I mean, sometimes you can't. I mean, I haven't started lactating yet, but I know people who are breastfeeding, and a lot of times you can't stop it. No, <laughs> like it just happens, you know, when it yeah. feels like it. Oh my so. god! Yeah, I didn't even know about that. Yeah, you have weird rules. I think I I have like a cosplay photo shoot coming up that's going to involve like a lot of fake blood. It's a Kill Bill cosplay photo shoot, mm -hmm. so it's like you can't do Kill Bill without like a ton of fake blood because it's terrible. Yeah. Like, I was like, am I going to get flagged for blood? Even if I say it's fake blood, OnlyFans, their yeah. guidelines are really weird. It's not like you're selling the bodily fluid, like actually selling it. Because that's- Yeah, it's part, of, it's part of the costume. Yeah. 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 And so like, I know like selling used, or, like dirty panties is like illegal. Everyone does it. It's illegal. You can market them as clean panties and then it's fine. And but... then, and then nobody will buy them. That's right. <laughs> No one will buy them, <laughs> but like I mean, yeah. So I don't, I don't just. That's just bizarre to me that any of that would be unacceptable for the platform. And it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. But. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with because um, every uh, content platform, every website, every adult website is subject to the stringent the watchful eye of Visa and MasterCard. And oh. it's, it's the fear of Visa and MasterCard pulling their support from your website oh, sure. um, that you want to avoid. So when you actually build, if you build your own website on your own, um, you have to give Visa and MasterCard um, like access to your site and you have to give them like a week or so to review your site to make sure it's something that they're willing to put their credit card processing on. And if they oh, won't God. do it, you're fucked because that's everyone uses Visa and MasterCard to pay for content. So that's, that's, that's the great fear is that they will pull your account. I know American Express just pulled from OnlyFans. Like, just yeah, that doesn't they surprise they me. They were fucking dumb. And so like that, wow, I didn't know that about like individual websites. That's so crazy. Like you don't yes. think about these like credit card companies is having their own like weird set of moral guidelines about what they will oh, and totally. will not support. Like you're a trillion dollar corporation, like, and you give a shit. Okay. I mean, not just that. I don't know if you've ever heard for, or if you've ever had issues um, with like banks and insurance and all that kind of stuff. If they, they know that you, a lot of girls chase is notorious for shutting down sex worker bank accounts. That's crazy. Um, if they find out that you're in working in sex work, they will shut you down. And I know it sounds like something you should be able to sue them for, but it's not banks are private institutions and they can decide, uh, who they want to support and who they don't want to support, which is, you know, why cannabis has such a problem with oh, banking wow, yeah. as well. But like, so I've been dropped by insurance. 
I had my workers comp insurance like dropped on me because of that. Yeah. I mean, it's just like the, the way that the financial discrimination that sex work faces is pretty terrible. That is so gross. I was yeah talking about that with my mom yesterday and talking about like, like with chargebacks and stuff and with the banks and about what they will and will not help you with. And like, And then, you know, like with, with like PayPal and of course they have it written to their guidelines that, you know, you can't do it for anything sex work oriented, which is ridiculous, but it's, it's just part of their like Venmo and PayPal. It's just a part of their guidelines. And so like, if they decide, if they find out that you're doing, that you're processing payments through them for your sex work, they just take your money. It's not like, here's your money. Now never come back. It's just a, oh no, this is ours now. Like. We're yeah, talking- you got to pull your money out of your PayPal account oh, constantly because yeah. if you leave it sitting in there and they decide to shut you down, you will never see that money again. Oh, they yeah. don't give a fuck. They don't. It, oh god, it just it just blows my mind. And there's just nothing you can do. Like who can no. who, who do you take there's to court? The whole of the yeah. whole of PayPal over the four hundred dollars that you like. Yeah, it's just gross. Yeah. Everything about yeah, it is I- gross. Yeah, sex work doesn't generally have great supporters in the financial sector. That's for mm-hmm. sure. I mean, I've been um, having a hell of a time trying to like get any sort of like like a mortgage or anything like that because everyone's just like, "You do what?" <laughs> yeah, you gotta. I'm gonna go. Just you gotta. Home. So what you gotta do is set up a corporation, give it a name that is not even remotely closely related to sex work at all, and uh, set up like and just come up with some fucking lie about what you do. Like maybe um, you do photography or bikini modeling and then like even set up a website associated with that corporation name because they will search your corporation and just make it look like you do something else. You have to literally like lie about what you do. Heck yeah. Okay. I'm it's pretty it. shitty, but, but yeah. <laughs> I'll have to get That's, going on my cover story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, oh. Like the whole like facade. It's fucking ridiculous. Oh my God. So you mentioned your mom, um, and you mentioned earlier that you came from a more conservative Christian background. So do your parents know what you do for a living, and how do they feel about it? They do. Um, Both my mom and my dad know, and I'm not sure about the whole extended family, but they're extended. Eh, Fuck them. Uh, But like my- My mother-in-law doesn't know what I do. Oh, really? (laughs) What's, what's um, What's the bank lie that you've made up? For, oh, know. I shoot for Playboy. Oh my god, I love which is true, but not a lie. Like that's a very small part of my job, but it's acceptable to almost anybody. Heck everybody, yeah. The it's Playboy name is very acceptable. So oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I told my mom first, and I it it was only after it I had picked up enough steam on the internet to where like people from real life were finding me because I had like been sort of put out there and Mm -hmm. so um so people from real life were finding me and I was like fuck it's only a matter of time before somebody either doxes me and trying to extort me and blackmail me by holding my family and my boss over my head um and also at this point like people from real life are finding me it's only a matter of time before someone text messages my mother like I heard are you okay and I was gonna be like heard what (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, um, your daughter sold her soul to the devil. That's right. That's right. That's exactly what everyone thinks I did. And so, um, so I told them, um, and my mom, I think she was just like, she's really worried about me because she knew that I was making like a bunch of like large purchases. Like, I bought a new bed and I bought a car because, excuse me, I guess I didn't have one before. And so, like, I'm, I was getting my life together and she was like, where is all this money coming from? Like, I'm just really worried about you and blah, blah, blah. And, like, I think she, she thought that I was like in some sort of arrangement with someone that was not beneficial to me other than monetarily. And so she was like really worried. And I was like, no mom, I'm just, I told her first, I was like, I'm nude modeling, which also isn't a lie. And she was like, okay, that's fine. I'm glad you're not like, I'm glad something like crazy isn't going on with you. <laughs> so I was you like, don't have a bunch of aliens running a train on you. Right. Could have been a bunch <laughs> of aliens running a train on me. But, um, 
there was definitely like a big adjustment period and I explained to her more fully and it, I just tried to like make it a, a really open conversation where like if she had a question for me about something that I did, I would just answer it and just be super open and honest. And like um, I didn't want to falsely paint a picture for her of what I do, but I, I also, you know, I didn't feel like I had to share more with her than what she wanted to know. And mm-hmm. so um, she, I just, I just answered her questions anytime she had questions. And it was a really steep adjustment period. There was like a, like a month where um, my mom and my dad were both like just very upset and because they they also thought I was a virgin too so like I was like oh no like we're really just gonna have to we're just come and clean about all of it at the same time like let's just go ahead and just go ahead and get it all out there um so like it, it was just a lot of things like I'm very like go with the flow like I don't feel like it's a big deal because I I don't feel like I've compromised myself as a human being because I've sold pictures of my labia. So I don't, you know, it's not something that feels like a massive deal to me um, because, <laughs> because I'm the one who's doing it. But to everyone else in my life, coming from a really Christian, really conservative background, like everyone else is like, you're doing what? Like, like oh my God, I'm praying for you. And I'm like, fuck, like, Thank you so much. And and sure enough, like right after that, like people started calling my mom and like my mom didn't even tell them like, like just people were finding out through the grapevine and like started calling right. my mom and my dad like, how, how are you? Are you OK? And so um, they were getting like multiple phone calls and um, my dad still it's just we just don't talk about it. Like mm. every once in a while, like I'll share news and updates with my mom. I'll even send her the videos that I put on Twitter, like the little funny ones and let her giggle at them if she chooses to or not. If she doesn't want to, that's fine. But um, she wants to keep up with what I'm doing, but also ne- never see my Twitter ever. So I, which right. I'm like, cool. I can do that. Yeah, yeah. I can totally do that. Um, but like every, I, I ended up doing an interview um for an article for men's health magazine and my dad just like he's been very like AWOL and stoic anytime I come over to visit them but like the other day he was like so I heard you did an interview with the magazine I was like yeah that's pretty cool (laughs) he's like it is something that I can read I was like, okay, cool. We've made progress. It's like, yes, you can read it. It is, it is dad appropriate. So you can read that interview. <laughs> but um, it's just been, it's been really strange with, with my family. But honestly, I, I feel like I won the lottery with them being super, um, them adjusting really, really well in the past. They've adjusted to me having my own ideas and my own, you know, I have my own agenda. So mm-hmm. they've been, they've always been open to having a conversation, even when we have different and opposing viewpoints. And usually I can like explain to them why I feel uh, some type of way about a topic or, or something that's going on in the world. And then um, it just creates a really nice open conversation for me to sort of get some new perspective on them. And I feel like the same thing has happened with this. Like up until now, it's just been like porn and sex work is evil and it's the devil's plaything, and it's what the devil uses to get you. And, mm-hmm. and now it's like, no, it's not. It's, it's what's going to make me financially stable for the first time in my life. <laughs> but, um, and then I, I told my boss too, because I was like, shit like someone's gonna come up and work and recognize me and then that's gonna be that (laughs) so um I went ahead and I told my boss um who also is very Christian and um I I don't know how where he is on on politics or anything but he's um he's very devout but I explained the situation to him just super open I was like this is what I do this is what the website is like and he was like wow you're making how much (laughs) i was like cool so we're gonna be cool i was like you know if you want if you need feel like you need to fire me like i'm just want to give you the out like if you don't want me to work here or be around anymore like 
this is this would be the time for you to say like i would rather you not be here and we can part with like no hard feelings because i just i i love being there and i love being around them but like i i didn't want to make anyone uncomfortable and i especially didn't expect it to be like a secret from people's families i didn't want people to be like oh you're working with the harlot (laughs) yeah i didn't want to create anything uncomfortable because like i said i was saying earlier like i i I'm just, I'm working there just because I love to be there. It's not the job that I need or the one that supports me anymore. I just like being there. So, um, but he was like, hell no. Like, that's really cool. I would love to know more about the website and like how the, how the website operates. Like how to, how does it go financially? Like it just asked me a ton of questions about like how the banking stuff worked. It was just, it was just neat. So I was super I was I, I lucked out twice, like just like lightning in a bottle twice with telling the people who had the most influence over my day to day interactions in life. And I mean, all of my friends have been super cool and supportive. I honestly have had very few interactions with people who were super against it just from the get go and were like, we don't want to be around you anymore. But it, wasn't people who I ever saw anyway <laughs> so, right right like okay bye <laughs> um, I'll delete that's great that. yeah yeah because I know a lot of people who've lost family who've yeah. lost friends because they got into sex work because people really have their own ideas about it so you're really fortunate to yes, I am. not have experienced that yeah I I I, I maxed out on the privilege meter <laughs> with that one. Yeah. So I I definitely yeah, I'm I'm extremely thankful to have not lost anyone who I really, really loved and right could not be without. I was also going through a breakup during all of this and like from in that like long term relationship. Mm-hmm. So like the idea that all of a sudden I wasn't going to have this person who I loved so dearly and And who supported and encouraged you from the beginning yes the idea that I wasn't going to have that and then I also might not have the only other people in my life whose opinions matter to me like that was I was just so riddled with anxiety I was like trying to prepare myself for the worst and just like go ahead and like live through the worst case scenario to just prepare myself for it and then anything else other than them saying like get out of here I never want to see your face ever again, like is a plus. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. That's happened to so many people. So I feel Has like- it been weird for you to become so basically like successful and, and famous online in such a strange, such a short period of time? Has it really like, how has that affected your mental health? Um, how do you see yourself now? Do you feel the same? Do you feel different? Mm-hmm. It has been, it's been a massive whirlwind. Like I, I've, I've never expected anyone to pay attention to anything I had to say ever. And so like now knowing that I have an audience and like a a duty to, to speak up whenever I see something going wrong, not just from like a standpoint of like, oh, hey, that's fucked up. But like to like, I, I'm now responsible to speak out like on on issues that are and things that are going on because now I have a voice that matters and so it's been it's been a a really steep learning curve of like trial and error and making adjustments and it's like it's it's a lot of pressure and it's I don't I don't want to call it a burden because that's not really what it is but it's like it's just a, a lot of responsibility to make sure that I'm I'm being really really like socially aware of everything that's going on so that I can use all of that privilege and platform for good and so that's been that's been a really interesting adjustment I've had to make very, very quickly because I got all of these followers almost like overnight. And so, Mm -hmm. um, and it feels, it feels a lot like just like with going from having a hundred people hanging out on my OnlyFans to all of a sudden having thousands of people on my OnlyFans, like just Mm -hmm. balls to the wall, like, oh shit, like everything I say 
matters now. Like down right. to just the dumb shit posting. People are paying attention to yeah. what you say. And yeah. so I have to make sure that I'm saying that I'm being helpful, that I can do something that can help someone else mm-hmm. because now I have the power to do that. Not that I didn't before, yeah. but now I have the power to do that on a much larger scale where it really makes a difference. And so that has been, that's been so crazy. And I just, yes, yeah, it's, it's not something I, I ever thought that I was going to have at my fingertips or my disposal. So it's been, um, it's been kind of a whirlwind of that, but I, I feel like I've been, I'm flying by the seat of my pants, but I feel like I've been navigating it. Okay. (laughs) So I will, I'm just like, I'm hanging in there. I'm, I'm doing my darndest. Do you have any, uh, future plans, uh, places that you want to take? I mean, you built a career now, so do you have like a next step that you're planning on? Do, would you ever p- consider doing like professional shooting, even if it was just solo or do you want to keep everything contained like within your own brand and your own production and that kind of thing? I, I really like just keeping it like me, myself and I, and, um, my best friend is my photographer for like my really bougie photo shoots or like a big photo shoot. Um, and so like, I, I, I feel really comfortable in that little sphere. And Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't know that I would have the comfort level or the balls, honestly, to do like a, like a video or something, um, with, uh, like, like a, like a whole production. I, I don't think I could, I would ever be open to, for me and just my brand doing work with other people, like, like one-on-one, like shooting a video with someone just because I don't want, I don't want them to expect that. (laughs) And, and I don't, you do it once. They're like I, all the time. Yeah. So, um, for me, I think I, I would like to sort of keep to just the solo side of it, but I mean, I would love to do like a cool, fun photo shoot for something or something like that. Like that would be so much fun, but I would, I wanted to be an actress. That's what I wanted to do. And so I would love to sort of get to to move into some sort of facet of like TV or like movie acting. That would be so fun. I mean, that's like, that's like the dream, the daydream I dream about, but I honestly, I, I'm so happy and content doing exactly what I'm doing. Like if this is it, like if this is where, this is where I get off the bus, then I'm so cool with that. I'm having the time of my life. I'm in control and I enjoy it so much. So, I mean, if if nothing more ever happens, then I would be so okay. But um, but yeah, it would be really cool to get to do something with like like more mainstream media. That would be really, really fun and neat. But I don't have anything planned or anything set in stone coming up. Yeah, right. Daydreams. I mean, you really are like the poster child of the success of the self-produced uh, performer model, you know, with their own content platform who never had to work for anybody else mm-hmm. and who was able to, you know, garner success all on her own. Doesn't come in with the sob story of having been exploited by a bad agent or a boyfriend and getting forced into doing something that she didn't want to do and losing control over her, um, you know, over the, the content that, that she was engaging in. So, um, you're just a great example of how technology has really shifted the power into the hands of the performers and made them producers and performers and personalities all in once. So it's a very interesting Thing that you possess and um i'm you know i wish you all the best and and it was a pleasure getting to interview you thank you so much i had an absolute blast this was such a fun time thank you for having me of course of course 
And can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Could Do you perhaps have an OnlyFans maybe that people might want to check you out on? There might be one in the works. I'll tease it. <laughs> um, you can find me on Twitter at Savannah underscore solo. And you can find me on Instagram at X Savannah Solo X. I don't know. I'm never on there. Um, and you can find me on OnlyFans at Savannah Solo. No spaces, nothing fancy in there. And then I have a, a free page where I mostly just dump um, where I mostly just dump my silly videos. And I actually think I haven't posted anything on it in like a month. Um, but that is at Savannah Solo Free. And that's all the places you can find me on the internet. <laughs> fantastic and you guys can find me at holly randall on instagram and on twitter and if you want to support this podcast go to patreon.com slash holly randall unfiltered don't forget i have a facebook group facebook.com slash groups slash holly randall unfiltered and if you are not already watching this on my youtube channel make sure that you go there and subscribe youtube.com slash holly randall unfiltered thank you guys so much for joining us Savannah, thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to um, more of your ridiculous videos because they really do make my day. (laughs) I'm honored. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys, we'll see you next week.